Looking for an easy solution to all your digital storage needs? Introducing the Zima Blade. This is a small and stylish, I might add, single board computer, which at a bare minimum can provide your own cost-effective personal cloud storage system. But that's really just scratching the surface in terms of all the possibilities this thing can do for you. Welcome everybody to the Future Space Collective, where we explore the world of products for imagination. If you've never heard of a NAS or network attached storage or wondering why would I need this? Here's a really quick overview. So in today's digital world, storing and accessing your personal files across your devices is more important than ever. Whether you're looking to archive or share files of any kind really, a home server or NAS might be the innovative piece of tech you need in your home. But you see, it only just starts there, as these home servers are actually just dedicated computers that can be used for a huge range of functions simultaneously. This is achieved through different loadable apps, which I'll show you later. I have with me today here the full Zima Blade 7700 NAS kit. Here is the box. You know, just from pictures, it's got a really cool cyber futuristic design to it. Ooh, okay. Included note they give you. Wow. Get a good look at this right here. Super cool, super futuristic looking. It almost reminds me of like an old school tape deck or something. Hit that play, rewind. You can see all the I.O. this thing has included with it. USB-A, USB Type-C, Ethernet port, and a mini display port. On the other side of it, we have our PCI Express port, if you did want to plug in another card or something. And on the side, we have our SATA inputs for our hard drives. To open this thing up, you just gently pop off the side, like so. Now we're gonna unscrew these screws right here, so we can pop the RAM in. Okay, so now the RAM stick is in. So that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, this thing is ready to go, but if you do want to use it as a NAS, we're going to need to plug in hard drives to it, which is what the NAS kit is for. That includes this nice little hard drive bay here, power adapter, SATA cables, mini display to HDMI adapter. Hard drives just slide into the hard drive bay where you can screw them down and attach your SATA connectors. The blade just kind of sits up top. Basically, it's a self-contained unit like that. So let's put everything together and fire this thing up for the first time. Okay, so I actually picked up two eight terabyte hard drives on Amazon for a great deal. That's gonna give me a total of 16 terabytes of space on the Zima Blade. So I'm gonna take out my old hard drives I was using to test this thing. And it's really great because you can mix and match hard drives of any size and then in the software, you basically combine the two drives into one drive for your network attached storage. So I'm no stranger to servers. I already have one built that I have been using, repurposed from an old computer. But the thing is, it's big, it's bulky, it's heavy, it draws a lot of power, and it takes up a lot of space compared to this small package. So I personally plan to use this thing as a backup server for my files, which means I can finally get rid of all the backups I have in here. So that's the plan. Let's go and make it happen. So once you plug in your Zima Blade via Ethernet into your router or home network, you're going to boot up your browser. You're going to type in casaos.local. If it's your first time, it'll allow you to set up a login. Once everything is up and running, it should look a little something like this. We click our storage manager. Go ahead and give your drives a format. We're going to go over here to merge storages. We're going to click both of the drives, hit submit. Basically, it combines both the drives together to be used as one drive okay so right away if we go into files we can actually start uploading files or folders through this web browser immediately test folder just drag and drop and you can see it quickly uploads 
can click it back and you can go ahead and play it. To connect to your computer as a folder, you click files, we're gonna hit uh, share, and because we're on a Mac, we're gonna copy and paste this address, we're gonna open a new finder window, hit go, connect to server, paste in our address, and boom, quick little trick, we're gonna take this, we're gonna drag it, and now we have a shortcut to our server in the sidebar here on a Mac. Here's some files, I'm gonna drag one over, it's gonna start copying. If you're on a Windows machine, the process is also relatively easy to connect. You're gonna open up your Windows Explorer here. We're gonna hit Map Network Drive. Hit Reconnect that sign in. Hit Finish. As easy as that. Because now what you can do is you can actually make a shortcut to it, just like I did on my Mac. Going to our now pinned network drive. You can see the files there that we just copied over. We can copy it to our desktop. And this is a really simple, easy way to back up your files or share between different computers. Super awesome, super simple, really love it. Okay, so another essential must-have app that's really cool is called Plex Media Server. So if we click through to the App Store, there's gonna be an array of apps you can install. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install this one called Plex. It runs on the computer where you keep your media. In this case, we're running it off of the Zima Blade server itself. You're gonna point it to a folder on your server. Plex is gonna index that, and then you can now play back that file anywhere. It's really cool, let me show you. So we're gonna call this JM Z Blade. Make sure allow me to access my media outside my home is finished. Okay, we're gonna add a library. It will automatically index different types of media. I like to use this for my home videos. I'm gonna hit other videos. I've loaded in a file to show you as an example, a future space vid, hit next. We're gonna browse for that media folder. So you're gonna look for the folder that you've created on your server. So in my case, it's gonna be under media. I'm gonna add that, add library, hit next you'll see it will index the videos you've added. So you can go ahead and play them right in your browser. But the really cool thing with Plex is you can actually access this now from anywhere. So if you're on a different computer, you can literally go to plex.tv, log into your account, and you can watch your files there. If you're on a smart TV, you download the Plex app, log into your account, and now you can watch your added files there. And it's really not that complex if you break it down. Okay, so right there, being able to share your files and being able to easily serve your media remotely are two very basic functions of running a server. And the Zima Blade specifically is an excellent choice if you're a beginner just getting into this stuff. As I've shown, it comes pre-installed with Casa OS, which is very easy to use and you're basically up and running right out of the box as soon as you turn it on. Very quickly, ready to start sharing files and installing apps on it. Not only that, but if you did want to dive deeper into this world or are a bit more advanced with building out servers and stuff, the Zima Blade is still a great option as it is capable of doing more advanced tasks or installing more advanced apps, even custom apps through a Docker container. Okay, so let's move forward into a couple of other ways that I personally use my server that are starting to get a bit more advanced, but are still within the realm of fairly simple tasks. I will provide links to everything in the description and how to do this stuff if you want to learn more. But the next thing I use my server for, which you can absolutely use your Zima Blade for as well, is for syncing my phone every night to the server. And what I mean by that is I use an application called PhotoSync, which is an excellent application so you can upload and back up your phone nightly to a myriad of different places, locations, or services, including your server. Now, the way I personally do this is by backing it up with PhotoPrism. Now, PhotoPrism is another app you can install to your server, which is photo video management software that's gonna index all your files and give you a way to like easily browse all your photos and videos which is especially handy if you have thousands of photos or videos, let's say, archived throughout the years. It will actually sort them, you can tag them, and, and it'll read you know, ones you've favorited. So it's really, really great for that. However, if you don't wanna use PhotoPrism to work with the PhotoSync app, you don't have to, as you can just upload directly into a folder using PhotoSync, such as I've shown you. So I don't pay for cloud backup for my mobile photos and videos directly when I can just store them on my home server. So the next thing I use my server for, which you absolutely can too, is an app called SyncThing. 
Now, Sync Thing is really, really great because it allows you to keep two different folders in sync. Take a folder you have on your computer, let's say, you can have it back up or sync that folder to a different location on your server, let's say your Zima Blade server or a different server, or you can keep it in sync in multiple places. And sync thing is really great because as soon as you move a file into that folder, it's gonna automatically detect that and it's gonna make those changes. There's a ton of different options and ways you can set this up to keep one folder, the main folder, syncing to other folders or have them both syncing to each other and this allows you to use your computer or your laptop as sort of like a personal cloud. Whereas instead of just using this as like a network attached storage, instead you can now sync files from your computer to have them in both locations and use your server as a backup. And the last app that I'm using, which you can too, is an app called Twingate. In a nutshell, Twingate gives me secure remote access to my server when I'm away from my home, when I'm away from my local network which again allows me to then access my network attached storage or use sync thing to use my home server as my own personal cloud. It's been working great for me so far. I highly recommend it. I'm running it currently on both of my servers and it's really nice to be able to get into either of them when I'm away from my house, away from the studio. So those are all the ways that I'm using my server. The Zima Blade is an excellent option. If you're a more advanced user, it's a great package at a great price, but it's also great great if you're a beginner user because it's built in operating system that it ships with is really easy to use and really easy to set up. So not only does it give you that sort of versatility if you want to do more advanced stuff with it, but if you're a beginner, it's really, really easy to set up in a very simple way. Links are in the description below to everything we've discussed and talked about. I want to know how many of you guys are using home servers and what you are using them for. Let me know in the description below. If you're curious to learn more about my desk setup and other things here, I've made a video which should be popping up on screen now you can click that and check it out all right see you in the next one